Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Play. This time we're gonna do Damien's Route. So if you're into vampires and stuff like that, just keep watching. <laughs> this is the walkthrough for you. It's not really a walkthrough, we skip around a lot because we just want to date these guys now. Yeah. We already did the story like eight times. <laughs> right at this point, we just want to have sex with all of them. Yeah. We didn't even get to do that with Robert. We have to go back and have sex with them in the beginning. That we makes them that. hate us. Well, I mean, just to see what happens. See, see what our sex is like. Oh my goodness. Anyway, here we go. Damien Blood March. How do you do? I finally decided to join this information superhighway. Wow. I'm not entirely sure how this works, but I will try my best to understand. I love long strolls through graveyards oh and spending God. time with my son. Aww. If you would ever like to chat about the latest in Victorian fashion, the inevitability of my own demise, or black cats, please send me a letter. Is, can there be a latest in Victorian fashion? It's Victorian. Uh, I mean, maybe. I, Damien would know better than me. He would take a coffin on a desert island. Is our game frozen? Yeah, it's frozen. Cool. Okay, well, what are your turn ons? Pronouncing bosom correctly. On Friday night, you are most likely to listen to true crime podcasts while I taxidermy my newest specimen. Great. Is this Susie? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're back. Oh, are we? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> we had some technical difficulties. What's new? Anyway, we're gonna try to romance Damien. Man. Can we like actually message him? Or is it more like we have to go write a letter and deliver it to his house? Why did you say that? Did you say something? Well he's the one who's like super into like actual letters. He even told that like you have to have a strongly worded like go hire. A person to deliver the letter being like, Damien Bloodbot, you are invited to attend dinner <laughs> with Sir Cayube. <laughs> Damien, you better be worth it. Right? This first date better be so cute. <laughs> What does it take? You know, like a whole minute to load. One day we'll have new computers. One day. Still blue. Damien, I'm getting sleep. Oh! Oh, God. Damien seemed really interesting. A little odd, but interesting. I think I should hang out with him to get to know him a little better. Navigate to Damien's dad book page and type out a message. Good morning, good sir! <laughs> hey dude, you seem cool, we should hang out sometime. I sit there for a minute before I see Damien's typing. But then he keeps typing. <laughs> and typing. This reminds me of that one message from your mom. Where, where she just, just typed for like a full the, five minutes. <laughs> I had to leave the room when she was taking too long. Man, is this guy writing a novel? I leave the computer to make some coffee. <laughs> Coffee and the computer finally dings. Taibe, I must confess. Oh. Wait, I must confess my excitement to be receiving your kind letter for, as you see, I do find myself available <laughs> to enjoy your company. I must ask for your forgiveness, however, as I believe our first meeting did not paint me as gentlemanly, in as gentlemanly manner as I would have liked. Oh, well, there's more. I would be highly flattered to enjoy your companionship at my residence for an afternoon tea and to stroll around my garden, should it please you. Till then, adieu. Yours, humbled, deep blood march. I'm gonna start signing, like, all my letters like that. Yours, Yours humbled. humbled. <laughs> I stare at the screen and reread the letters several more times. It's weirder each time. Uh, yeah. Hey, Amanda! <laughs> Amanda pops out of the room. Her eyes are a little puffy. Almost as if she's been crying. Amanda, baby. Hey, are you alright? Oh, we gotta do this? Oh. Yeah. Totally. I'm cool. Oh. I just found out that the succulent I've been watering and singing to for the last few months was actually made out of plastic. True story, though. My mom. 
uh, she was like watering these three plants in the back room, and one day my dad caught her and was like, "Dude, why are you watering those?" And she's like, "Cause they need water." And he's like, "Those are big plants." <laughs> she had been doing it for a month. She didn't notice. They okay. look like fake plants. Look pretty fake. My mom's a little screwy. <laughs> yeah, my dad was like, uh, "That's funny." Cheryl and Cinnamon are playing together. They're down here. Okay. Oh, honey. Uh, I'm so sorry about your plan. I can buy you a new one if you want. A real one this time. Hmm. That's sweet, but I rescued that plant. And now that I know it's fake, I... <laughs> she clenches her fist with determination. I'm still gonna love it no matter what. Yay! Is this what being a parent is like? Yes, sweetie. Make sure it gets into a good college. Change the song now. Can you help me with something? Ugh. <laughs> Dad, for the last time, I'm Ew! not popping your back pills. Ew! Oh, no. Can you interpret this for me? Huh. I showed the computer to Amanda and she squints at Damien's message. I just don't understand that speak. Like, is this how you kids communicate with each other now? Oh, totally. This is a new hot thing. See, Dad. Oh, see, Dad. Kids get hot over saying "lol" and "lmao" or whatever, and decided that what we needed to do was bring it back to the 1800s. So what do I do? Hmm. Who's your pen and quill? What? <laughs> Did you forget to unpack the pen and quill, Dad? How will we address the nobleman in regards to your upcoming debutante ball? Okay, now I know you're messing with me. <laughs> Father, without a proper chaperone, you'll never end up with a suitor worthy of our land. <laughs> or our dowry. Huh. Or... So you read Pride and Prejudice for school one time and now you're reciting things you know about it back to me, aren't you? Hmm. Like, the first five pages, then I read a review of the movie. Still gotta be, though. Great, so what do I say to Damien? I got this. Amanda reaches over me and types on the keyboard. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Amanda hits send and smiles at me. <laughs> well, I suppose that's that. Sure thing, Damien. Oh! Wow. I make the short walk over to Damien's house. Well, I guess you can't really call it a house. It's more of a manor? A state? The gothic architecture looms above the other homes in the cul-de-sac. How much oh, did it cost shit. him to get this made like this? <laughs> I walk past a couple of gargoyles guarding the front door and look around for a doorbell. There doesn't seem to be one. No wonder Lucian dresses like that. Like, if this was my house, I wouldn't know what to do. I pull the large, ornately carved bat's head door knocker back, and a hollow sound echoes throughout the house as I strike it against the door. Take off, take off, take off. Oh, oh no. Ah, I gotta ah, run. Ah. Welcome to my house. <laughs> it's a little creepy, but I enter the home and take a few steps into the foyer, noting the oil portraits of who I assume are dead relatives hanging on the wall. Neat. Oh. Is that him and his son? Oh. Or is that the family? Wow. Look at the dog. As I'm in the front door slam shut behind me. Hello? Silence. An oil lamp in the corner flickers dimly, casting ominous shadows against the wall. Oh, God. Why do I feel like all the people in these paintings are staring straight at me? Why is it so cold in here? Where's Damien? It's gonna be like that video game where you're that chick. Like people are watching you through the portrait while you get dressed. Haunting room. Cool. <laughs> Kayubi, pleasure to have you in my home. Ah! Look up and see Damien standing at the top of a majestic staircase with a walking candle mm. holder. Do mm. my bidding. <laughs> Hello, Sia. What's uh? What's with the door slamming shut? Oh, sorry. There was a draft. And the door creaking open when I knocked? 
More of a crypt? Right. Well, I accidentally left the door unlocked. And the creepy oil paintings? I like oil paintings. Right. Hmm. Right? Please! Let me show you around. <laughs> okay. Damien leads me around his house, showcasing his parlor, sitting room, auxiliary sitting room, and the parlor again for some reason. It's a good spot. Oh. This is one of the older homes on the block, yes, but nowhere near as old as the architecture might suggest. <laughs> Through extensive renovations, I have been able to craft a residence that is both historically accurate to the Victorian period and equipped with the amenities of any modern dwelling. We walk past the door covered in bumper stickers, caution tape, and a black Oh uh, yes, poster. the help. <laughs> Did he listen to my chemical romance in the Victorian era? That's my son's room. You know how the rebellious teenage years are. Onward, onward, there's more to see. <laughs> hmm. We reach a door at the end of the hall that Damien opens with a flourish. Ah. And this is the library. It is Beauty and the Beast. Yep. Sunlight streams in from floor to ceiling. It's yours, Kayube! <laughs> Walls are lined with packed bookshelves. Even more books are scattered over the pretty and appropriate furniture. Damien is clearly really proud of this room. Oh, let's look at the butterflies. That's interesting. Aww. I walk up to the glass display of pink bugs on the wall. It's pretty impressive. Nice bugs. Oh. I pinned them all myself. Maybe I could show you how sometime. I'm concerned I would stick the pin right through my finger. Oh. Ah, the penner's gambit. Is that a thing? Ah. No! <laughs> Let's uh, pick up the book. Oh. You know, Kaiyube, in the Victorian era there was some controversy surrounding reading. Many people thought the more tardy novels would encourage youths into a life of crime and would cause too much of a distraction for work and school. I pull out a book at random and examine the word cover. Opening it, I turn to a random page and read aloud. Big booty bitches, big- Naruto struggled oh. against the chains that Sasuke had bound him with. Shirtless and out of breath, he looked up at Sasuke. Sasuke smirked, unbuttoning his ninja pants. How do they find my fanfiction? What? Okay, I think that's enough! Damien snaps the book shut and puts it back onto the shelf. Damien is a saucy Naruto fan. I can see it. Okay. Hmm. That's a rare book <laughs> from my private collection. <laughs> Privatefanfiction.net. Very old, very dated. <laughs> Let's look out the window. I walk to the window and included by a beautiful view of Damien's backyard. It showcases a beautiful view of the rest of the cul de sac. Hey, I can see Craig on his lawn. He's doing push ups. Oh my god. With his daughters on his back. I mean, you Damn. need resistance. He sees me and waves happily. <laughs> Damn! <laughs> Did you know that Victorians spent at least 20 hours a week gazing longingly out of full length windows? Wait, really? Oh. No! But Victorians did appreciate telling a good joke! <laughs> Please! Will you join me for tea? I followed Damien to a sitting room where finger foods have already been set out on a beautiful tiered silver tray. I take a seat on one of the high back chairs as Damien pours and serves me some tea. How often does, like, Craig know that he's being stared at? That he looks up and is like, It's normal! <laughs> hey! What's up? <laughs> You again? Are you guys company? Cool. <laughs> Craig and Damien like write signs to each other, like that one Taylor Swift music video. But instead of like, oh, it's so sad, it's just more like Craig being like, push ups, bro. Damien being like, nay. <laughs> A gentleman would never be caught shirtless in his yard with two youths on his back unless oh, he were a slob. I'm a human. She's like a little question mark. Like, what? 
I can't believe we're having a high tea. I never thought I'd get to do this. Ugh. Damien smiles to himself. What? Mm. It's a common misconception that high tea refers to the wealth or class of the people enjoying it, when in fact, the high refers to both the later time of day that the working class had to enjoy tea and the height of the tables on which they're served. This is like when you talk to me about Silent Hill. And I'm just there, like, trying, you know, watching the game or watching you play it or whatever. And then you're like, okay, but did you know about this monster? It was actually inspired by this over here. And I'm just like, what? Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> what? That's almost exactly what this is. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh. My dear friend, we're currently enjoying afternoon tea. That's informative. Damien takes a seat next to me and serves me a tiny sandwich. Um, your home is really impressive. Oh, that is a dick card. Damn it <laughs> seems like you've really put a lot of work into this place. Hmm. Thank you. Oh. No one's ever complimented oh. my home before. Oh, I can barely get matching salt and pepper shakers in my place. Look at what you've done. I'm kind of jealous. Hmm. That's very generous of you to say. What got you so interested in goth stuff? Oh. Well, when I was a young boy, my father... Did he take you into the city? Huh. Sorry? Is he a marching band? How did you guys see a marching band? <laughs> I'm afraid I don't understand! <laughs> Are you serious? Of course! But it's, you know, the song. Amanda made me listen to it. Seriously? I love to see a marching band. <laughs> Nevertheless, I've always had a love for art, history, and fashion. What started off as a small hobby of collecting Tama Dirty attempt. What the fuck? Oh my! That was very ungentlemanly of me. Let me try again. <laughs> Taxidermied animals grew into sort of an obsession. It's a privilege to be able to appreciate the lives and culture of those who came before us, I think. Why not go all the way? Uh. I like not dying when I catch a cold. He takes a sip of tea. I can acknowledge that there were many very terrible things about the Victorian era, and to try to live a life that strictly aligns with those ideals would be admittedly horrid. Oh. But I think it takes a critical mind to truly appreciate something to the fullest, to be cognizant of its flaws and love it all at the same. Hmm. Tell me, Kayube, do you have any hobbies? Oh man, I do, but I don't know if I care about anything the way you care about this stuff. <laughs> well, I love to hear about your interests. Hearing someone talk about the things they're passionate about is intriguing, and quite honestly, rather attractive. Oh, damn, Damien, you're just fucking going. <sighs> Please, do tell me about your hobbies. Quick, sound sophisticated. Uh, let me get some word jumbles. Uh, soap making videos. Soap is, uh, an important advancement in modern society, getting rid of germs and stuff. <laughs> I would say that the people who make soap are the true heroes here. To watch them work is an honor. Hmm. I, uh, I tried making some of the Amanda ones, so we both had to go to the doctor for the rashes. <laughs> Which I guess goes to show that we should leave it to the professionals. We finish our tea and finger sandwiches. Oh. Come! I have one more thing to show you. I don't think he was impressed by it so big. But he didn't hate it. <laughs> <laughs> Damien takes me around the back of his home, where a variety of flowers flourish in beautifully landscaped rows. A small stone path weaves through it, and butterflies flit lazily through the air. Do you like my garden? Sometimes a rogue football will come through from Craig's side of the fence and knock the angel's head off. I've had to super glue it eight times. <laughs> that guy! Seriously! <laughs> Sorry, dude. <laughs> it's beautiful. Uh -huh. Thank you! Oh. Victorians took flowers and floral arrangements very seriously. 
You see, it was considered uncouth to discuss personal and romantic relationships in public, so lovers and friends alike would use the bouquets to send secret messages to each other. Each flower and plant is symbolic of different feelings. Mm. Even more interesting is that one flower could mean different things depending on the other plants it was paired with. One had to be extremely careful, as even the style in which the ribbon was tied around the bouquet affected the message. Mm. Damien leans down and plucks a gorgeous, bright orange flower off the vine. Ah. Lilium Bloomifirm! <laughs> the orange lily! What do you think this one means? My loins are flames! Thou art the tightest. That one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the orange lily is actually symbolic of pure hatred! Wow, thank you, Damien. Here, yeah, it's for you! <laughs> well. <laughs> and that's precisely why floral arrangement is so challenging. What's your favorite type of flower? Cause they're cute, and you can't do that thing where you squeeze them so it looks like they're talking. What a lovely choice! Aww! I'll have to remember that when I put together a bouquet for you! Damien... He... He would put together a bouquet for me? No one's ever given me a bouquet before. I follow Damien down the footpath and admire more of his beautiful flowers. Suddenly, a phone rings. Huh. Oh, God, you may will you. Excuse me, I must take this. He pulls his cell phone out of his pocket. I'm a little surprised it's not a rotary phone. Go for it. <laughs> Damien smiles and walks back to the house. I take a deep breath and enjoy the heavily perfumed air. What a lovely yard. This makes me wish I had put a little more effort into that garden Amanda and I tried to start one time. I watermelons grew to the size of cherry tomatoes and then immediately died. Oh, hey, a gargoyle. Oh no, I knocked over the gargoyle! Oh god, oh no! Can't guard. Do it, do it. Oh my god. We're on the time limit. Please. Well, that's his head. So that has to be. Try that other piece then. Yes? Yes. No? no. We're gonna have to redo the fucking times. What is it? What? You could flip it? Oh my god. <gasps> no, please. Be like, please, no. <laughs> right? I was like, I finally figured it out. I don't want to redo another mini game. I'm so bad at these. Every single one except for Roberts, I've had to redo because I'm bad. <laughs> oh, Roberts one was like, look, I carved a bean. It's real. <laughs> so, good job. Looks just like me. Oh, Robert. There's oh, a pixel. Little baby. Out. There we the go. <sighs> that was a close one. Uh oh, here comes Damien. He, saw me. he looks upset. <laughs> Can Can you pay my sincerest apologies to have kept you waiting. There's an urgent matter that I must attend to, so I'm afraid I must take my leave. No problem, dude. Everything alright? <sighs> Damien worries the hem of his coat with his fingers and looks away. <sighs> Everything is perfectly fine, but I... Uh, it's Lucian. What's wrong? <sighs> he appears to have... Well, his teacher needs me to come to the school. Post haste! Do you need help? <sighs> oh no, you, you don't have to. Let me come with you. Us dads gotta stick together. Huh. You're right. This is one of Lucian's more elaborate stunts. I would greatly treasure having another parent by my side. Let's go! Woohoo! 
<laughs> what are you doing? I'm so surprised. Damien and I walk into the school and are immediately greeted by an anxious looking Hugo. <sighs> hey, Damien. You're here in record time. Oh, no. I wouldn't miss it for the world, dear friend. Wow. Whatever it is, it doesn't seem like this is Hugo and Damien's first time to the My Kids Are In Trouble rodeo. Huh. What is it this time? Hmm? This... Damien, you have to see to believe. Damien and I fall into sight behind Hugo, who leads us through the busy corridors of the school. We pass by several classes in session, and I vaguely wonder if Amanda's around. Hugo eventually ushers us into a small boiler room with a flight of rickety stairs leading down into darkness. What the fuck? <laughs> Watch your step. I can hear faint voices drifting up from the basement, and they don't sound happy. As I'm led into the depths of the school, I recall the antics I got into as an angsty middle schooler. At least I had enough st sense to stay out of creepy basements. Guys! We find another teacher in her boiler room, tucked away in the back of the basement. With him are Lucian and Ernest, Hugo's son. Lucian has a bloody nose. Oh? Thanks for coming. I can't make heads or tails of this. I look around the scene of the crime and see a bunch of bricks and some masonry tools scattered around. Hmm. What's happened here? Ernest punched me. Lucian tried to kill me. What? The room uh -huh. was silent. I was not trying to kill you, dumbass. I was just trying to build a brick wall around you to see what would happen. You promised me there was wine down here. You tricked me. Oh, hmm. that's based off the story. Or her husband becomes a drunk, and so she tries to build a wall around his dead body, or his sleeping body, his drunken body, and am I getting this wrong? Someone builds a wall around someone, and then they <laughs> they accidentally like close themselves in with them, and they die. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> Did you try to cask of, um, That's what it piano? is! I'm neither confirming nor denying that. I turned to Damien and whispered to him. What's, uh, what's cask of Amontillado? It's a cla- that's why I'm Oh, that's why you know it! <laughs> it's a classic Edgar Allan Poe short story where a man gets his enemy drunk. Lures him down to a cellar with the promise of wine of a fine vintage, then buries him alive behind a brick wall. Okay, so it wasn't a girl. It was a man. Still. <laughs> it's a lovely story. Damien. It's been a long time. <clears throat> so wait, Lucian. You tried to do that to him? I was curious to see how it turned out. I wasn't actually going to leave him there. It's the thought process here that Ernest was just going to sit still while you slowly built a tomb around him? Well, it worked for like 20 minutes because he's an idiot, <laughs> but then he realized that I had lied about the wine. Crackling maniacally, that sort of tipped me off. Ernest, 20 minutes? Dad. What? It took you 20 minutes? Son, we just did an entire two-week unit on the Casco of Monteado, and it took you 20 minutes to realize you, Lucian was leading you into an elaborate ruse? Did you even read the story? I read the first five pages. Oh my god. Oh movie. no. What? It's only five pages long, and there is one movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. I paid Lucian to read it for me. <sighs> Actually, you didn't even pay me, so when you think about it, it was me teaching him a lesson. Timmy and Hugo both have their heads in their hands! You guys are always telling me to engage in the literature, and I didn't. I don't see a problem here. Alright, I'm filing this under what the hell. Don't do whatever that was again. You two are both suspended for a week. Ernest <laughs> Illusion high five! The teacher starts to stomp up the stairs. Hugo, I'll cover your class. Take your son home. Mr. Bloodmarch, you too. Thank you for your mediation. We all head up the stairs and out of school in ten silence. Lucian, and David, and I all pile into my car and begin the drive home. Lucian immediately puts his hood up and stares out the window angrily. I'm not going to therapy again. <sighs> 
Hmm. I know, son. It's entirely up to you whether or not you want to go. But I care about you, and I can see that you're struggling. So if you did decide that you would like to speak to a professional about your feelings, we can do that too. Huh. Maybe you can spend this next week looking for a summer job, hmm? I know how much you want your own car. I can't believe Damien's keeping his cool. I'm impressed. What a good dad. Fine. Thanks for not freaking out too hard. Hmm. I loved you, son. Hmm. Lucian continues staring out of the window. Aww, I'm so happy they get along, even though Lucian's like a dick. I love you too. Oh, oh, Lucian, you're so sweet, my little goth baby. She spent the rest of the drive in relative silence. At the moment we pull into the driveway, Lucian hops out of the car, slams the door, and runs inside. Hmm. I didn't expect to have that conversation in front of you. He and I have a lot we need to work out. It's alright. In all things considered, Lucian's bricklaying was pretty good, so it is your silver lining. Ugh. There is that, yes! Mmm. I really admire how you handled that. You were a lot more diplomatic with him than I would have been. I just want what's best for him, and I don't think yelling at him would do either of us favors. It rarely does. You're a good dad. See you around soon? Oh. It would be my honor and my pleasure! Damien bows with a flourish. Classy. Huh. I come oh, home well, to find Amanda curled up on the couch with a blanket watching TV. I flop down next to her. Yo! What you watching? Yeah. Teddy House Hunting Brothers, Extreme Edition. Ugh, I hate this show. The couple on screen bickers back and forth while standing in an extremely small house made out of recycled bottles. The Tiny House Hunting Brothers watch them with amused expressions, both of their heads touching the low ceiling. I told you I wanted a two bed, two bath, shabby chic cottage. This house doesn't even have a bathroom. But honey, the outhouse is only 20 yards away! It's not that bad! I'M NOT PUMPING OUTSIDE, GREG! Why don't they just get a regular sized house? I... I don't know. Hmm. How'd happen in Tigo? It got strange. We had to go to the school and pick up Lucian since he tried to... Eh? He lured Ernest down into the cellar with the promise of fine vintage and then tried to break him into the wall, right? How did you know that? Has everyone read this story except for me? <laughs> Did she didn't livestream the entire thing. Oh my god. This entire day is beyond me. But otherwise, it was a fun day. The Damien guy's a character, but he's a really good company. And a surprisingly diplomatic dad. I dig his style. You know what? Me too. Is that the end of his date? That was a very short date compared to, like, Matt. Matt was so long. There you go. Oh god. What did we do? Did good. Wow! My stars, this... Never in a million moons have I had a date such as exquisite as this one. So I was like on point with his voice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Damien! I actually really like him. Right? I like that, like, if you just kind of see him, like, in other roots, like, he's just, like, this weirdo. And then you actually talk to him and you're like, oh, wait, no, you're just very passionate about what you like and it's adorable. Yep. And I love you. I love you, Damien. I love you, Damien. I love you, Damien. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a bouquet for you, Damien. <laughs> Don't put that one flower in it. Oh, that means I fucking hate you. Orange one. <laughs> Oh fuck, we don't even remember what it's called. Whatever, it's orange. I just won't put any orange flowers in. That's good. Alright, well, it's almost one in the morning. So we're gonna end it here. Thanks for watching, and uh, see you guys next time. Peace Bye. out, Cub Scouts! Yeah.